My family found out I am rich and now they are demanding that I pay for a $35,000 vacation after I've already paid off all of their mortgages on their houses. To start, I'm a 46 year old female. I'm married and I have three kids. 10 years ago, we came into money, a lot of money. I worked hard in my specific field, which earns a lot. I had done some smart investments and they have paid out. I have steadily been adding to my bank account for these years. My husband considers this my money. We don't have a prenup, hence... I will talk as it's mine. When the first payload came in, I did what my husband and I always discuss if we would have the money. We paid off the mortgage, I bought a new car, and I managed to buy a nice house in our favorite holiday destination. We rent this one out to a very nice family for most of the year. We set up college funds for our children, each an equal amount which should be enough to pay for five years. If there is money left from the fund, the children can use it as a down payment on their own house or apartment. When the money kept coming in, thanks to investment to my work, I look towards what could be done for my immediate family. My husband has two sisters and we have five nieces and nephews on his side from one of the sisters. My brother has two children as well. It was decided that all the nieces and nephews would have college funds as well for the same amount as my children under the same strict stipulations. I would get information about the costs and make sure everything is paid. My eldest niece had already started college, so I paid the amount already paid to her parents to keep everything fair. She managed to finish within the four years and had some money left over. I had an accountant, who's my dear friend, find out what would be beneficial to my brother and one of my sister-in-laws in regards to their mortgage. I paid off the majority for both of them. My parents were sent on a nice trip since their house is already paid off and for both of my in-laws and other sister-in-law rent, so I paid a certain amount so they can save that money. Part of the money goes to charity at home and abroad. I also set up some college funds for the children of our closest friends and family members. As a treat, my husband, Elo, and I went on a paid by us slash me vacation with both my extended family and his. Now, at this point, everyone is very grateful. However, one of the sister-in-laws always has a need to be in the spotlight or that one or all of her children need to be. She's nice to my face, but I know for a fact she has been bad-mouthing me, making passive-aggressive remarks about me and my work and my person, but always in such a manner that you would be the B slash jerk if you would say something. My usual tactic, and one that always works, is play the innocent slash dumb one and nitpick what she says. I have managed to shut her up many times without being classified as a B. So, the past few years, my sister-in-law has been hinting that I should pay for a very nice, all-inclusive resort holiday for her and her family abroad since I have the money. Note, they have money saved that would have initially been used for the college funds of their kids, money that has barely been used. The pandemic hit and she has been silent. She and her husband took and still take it very seriously. Now the restrictions are mostly lifted. She had a birthday party for her and her son since her son really wanted to have a birthday party. No biggie. We show up with a gift for her and her son and all is well. Birthday boy got a voucher to buy a tent or the camping gear he wanted. My sister-in-law got a voucher to use whatever way she wanted. I added some sunscreen, drinks, and such as I knew she wanted to go on a holiday of some sorts. Or so we thought. She asks, what are our holiday plans. We say that we won't be crossing any foreign borders, stay in our home country, but we booked a cabin somewhere for a week. Very nice, not luxurious or anything. We would still need to cook and do the grocery shopping. My sister-in-law starts the, oh, how nice routine. We are still thinking about what we want to do. My lovely husband and I both have an inkling what she's hinting at, but we start spouting ideas in the hopes of avoiding tragedy. We have family at one place. Maybe they could stay there for a weekend or so. There's a campsite somewhere else with entertainment for children of various ages. Then it comes. She shows us something she found on the world wide web and to be honest, it looks amazing. Not too luxurious, but still very nice. All inclusive water park for the kids, spa sensor, the whole shebang. Price tag for a family of seven? $35,000. So my husband says that's a lot, but is glad they saved so much to do 
this. My sister-in-law goes, Oh, we don't. We thought you would be paying as my birthday gift. Say what? People, she just told us what she was looking at. No, scratch that. She expected me to give $35,000 as a gift for her birthday just because I have the money. She goes on that I earn enough and their family and our godson and the other nieces and nephews have been promised already and so forth. We all sat stunned in silence. Birthday boy and two of his sisters even look up to see what we would say while we were playing with our little ones. My husband just started laughing, thinking it was a joke. My father-in-law just sat there and looked on and I did a seemingly very good impression of a fish. No, my sister-in-law was dead serious. You have the money. You can just give it. You won't miss it. This woman has shown her disdain for me and my work many times in a very sweet, passive-aggressive manner so that it is hard to call her out on it. Me, my husband, and even her father still have done so. I just sat there and listened how she widened her eyes, trying to look sweet, something she does every time she wants something, and giving all the reasons why we should give the money without counting the voucher we already gave her. I then regained my wits and say the full sentence she didn't want to hear. But you have the money. I have the money. That is true. So you can pay for it. I could indeed. Interrupting me. Oh, that's great. But I won't. But, but, but. But, 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 but we deserve it. You won't even miss it. We're family. Yep. Unfortunately, you and I are family now. I love being a family of your kids, however. I said, fact. We are indeed family. Fact. We all deserve a nice holiday after the fluff show called COVID. False. I would surely miss it since it won't be in the bank account. I intended that one as a joke. My sister-in-law and brother-in-law continue to rant about how much they think I should pay for it. I said, listen, you have shown me many times that you do not respect me or my line of work. You do not respect the fact that I worked very hard and made sacrifices to earn this money. You do not respect the fact that I have paid off your mortgage, paid for the college education of your children, and even some money for their own place. You badmouth me, call me names, and even told people that my husband should divorce me. My sister-in-law is trying so hard to deny it, and my brother-in-law calls me a liar. My father-in-law joins in and sides with me. Her own children can tell their father that they have heard their own mother say horrible things about me. The birthday boy even recorded one conversation she had with someone while he was making a TikTok video. He showed this, and my brother-in-law went mute. The conversation continued. Continues. My sister-in-law notices she won't get the expensive holiday she wanted and says, Fine, they don't pay for this holiday. The least you can do is pay for our plane tickets and let us stay at your holiday home favorite holiday destination. Remember, I rented out to a local family for most of the year. Due to COVID, they have to stay there as they can't slash are afraid to travel. I said not happening. First of all, that family can't leave. Second of all, you don't get to make demands. That voucher you got has a very generous amount of money on it for you to use in any way that you please. Maybe towards a holiday. Third, we already went on a paid by us slash me holiday. So you got a paid for holiday already. And fourth, if you want more money, then get a job that will pay more. You have a degree. Last, you treat me like crap and still expect me just to hand over my hard earned money. My sister-in-law starts the waterworks and turns to her father who completely completely sided with me. He told her he understood me. He told her he knew how hard I worked and the sacrifices me and my husband made for this. My husband is pissed. He sees Red and tells his sister in no uncertain terms that this won't be happening and how dare they. He tells her that we're leaving. We pack up the kids and go home. Later we get a call. My mother-in-law has FM tendencies as this sister-in-law is her favorite. She tries the whole spiel about how hard they had it before I came into money and help them, etc. My husband dealt with her perfectly and she understood after a lengthy conversation. Now is where I just laugh. Apparently, my sister-in-law's kids are pissed that she pulled this stunt and went into full rebel mode. We have a great relationship and seemed afraid that this would influence it. They managed to come by and we had a heart-to-heart. I told them we didn't blame them for the actions of their parents. I explained to them the reasons for not handing out money like that after the initial gifts and the youngest seemed to side more with their 
mom and dad, but the rest said they understood. They know about their generous college slash home funds. I stated to them that we wouldn't want for them to do anything against their parents as they still live there. They stayed for dinner and then went home. As of now, the kids are barely talking to their parents. They still do their chores, let them know things, but that's it. Flying monkeys in the form of other family members came in as my sister-in-law had sent them messages and called them. A simple Facebook post by Birthday Boy with the video put a stop to that. My sister-in-law and brother-in-law had an enormous backlash by the flying monkeys calling them out. They have been uninvited to certain events. We have received apologies from the flying monkeys. Some told me that they had a hard time as they understood both her and me. The only thing that bothers me is the fact that my parent-in-laws are caught in the middle, especially my mother-in-law who is very family oriented. I know some of you might slash will wonder why I won't just give the money. One of the reasons why is the way that she has treated me even before I came into the money. Another reason is that I simply feel uncomfortable just handing out money. I simply ask for you to give your opinion in a kindly fashion. Am I the jerk for not paying? So here is part two to this whole story. My sister-in-law was very disappointed and angry that I didn't bow down to her every whim and pay for a holiday. We had some flying monkeys come in because of my sister-in-law. Most backed down and understood where we stood and left us alone. Unfortunately, the whole family on my husband's side now knows that we have a bank account with a lot of money in it. As my sister-in-law had called a lot of family members to complain and spill the beans, they began talking amongst themselves and their children. Some of the aunts, uncles, and cousins didn't think it was fair that I paid for some college funds for some of the children of cousins and that I paid for a family holiday. A couple of days after the fallout with my sister-in-law and aunt and uncle call, something that they never do. I put my phone on speaker as I was busy with folding the laundry and they ask how everything is going, how we were holding up during COVID and such. We exchange some experiences and then they both go like this. This is the start of the conversation. They say, listen, we hear you have some college funds set up for some of the children of certain cousins. Is this true? Yes, that's true. I'm no liar. Is it true that you took mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law, one sister-in-law, two, and family with you on holiday? Me. Yes. You also have a holiday home, yes? We do, but why do you want and need to know? We never knew you had so much money. Well, a lot of hard work, sacrifices, and dedication, and luck were a part of it. Aha! Uh-huh. Well, you have to pay for our grandchildren's college funds as well. And we want to go on holiday with our children, too. We deserve it, too. Me in shock silence. We're a family, so you have to pay. Me less shock silence. Yes, we want college funds for your six grandchildren, each consisting of $800,000 for each child, and we want a holiday home like yours, but in this location, We already have one we want and we'll send you the information. And that also goes for our family holiday. We're a family and since you have the money, you can pay for us too. I was in pissed silence. They continued to rant that they deserve it because their family and family takes care of each other. My husband, meanwhile, had heard everything was getting angrier. I had pressed a record button halfway through the conversation and asked them to repeat their demands. I eventually asked them if they had more to say, which they hadn't. I just flat out said that it wasn't going to happen. They might think they're entitled to my money, but they weren't. I quoted that phrase that they and many of the family give us when my husband and I didn't have the money and we were in a tight spot because we had a health scare. We asked every family member if we can borrow some money and we would pay it back. Only three of the nine aunts and uncles helped us and we paid them back. The quotes, it's your responsibility to have and save enough money for the care, well-being and education of your family. If you can't, then you don't deserve them. We won't be giving you any money. Stunned silence on their side. I told them to relay the message to the rest and to not call us with such demands and I hung up the phone. My husband was very proud. In the weeks that followed, some of the other aunts and uncles and cousins called with the same. Only those aunts, uncles who helped us us in our time of need called and told us to say that it is our money and that they have seen plenty of it and don't ask for more. One cousin called and asked for a certified loan for a down payment on a house, something I have agreed to. They had the majority saved but came short $1,000. They had to pay for it sooner as they could get the house sooner. Just now I saw that I received the first half of it. That also raised hell. Then with the aunts, uncles, and cousins, we had a Zoom call and I explained to them my reasons for not doing this. I told them that they could always come to me when they truly needed financial help, but under legal contract so that neither party would feel themselves getting screwed over. My cousin who borrowed some money even showed the certified slash notarized loan. Most seemed to understand but not entirely happy, but they knew they could come for help, but for some it wasn't. Then came the cherry on top. I came home last week on a weekday to find a lot of parked cars in an otherwise almost empty street. I had to pass my house in order to park somewhere else around 15 to 20 of aunts, uncles, and cousins had gathered in the front yard so much for social distancing. Afterwards, there were three aunts, three 
uncles and some cousins and their spouses. I just parked the car and walked back home. Another thing that a few people know is don't mess with me. I am told that my right hook is very painful. So while walking back, I called the non-emergency line of our local police station. And I told them the situation and telling them that crap might hit the fan if they come and assist in case it got out of hand. They would send some cops and then crap hit the fan. The moment I stepped inside of people, they started screaming, cursing, telling me to pay up or they will make sure that I'll pay one way or another. All the while cornering me. Some of the people poked their finger close to my face and my chest and my arms and I told them multiple times to stop what they were doing and leave. Sometime though, during this, more cops were called by some neighbors as well and when they arrived, they were trying to get me. Then one uncle made a big mistake. He slapped me. A man of about six foot three slapped me. A woman of just five foot two across the face in full view of the cops. The crowd went silent as he put his face almost in my face and went on a rant about how I had to obey him as one of the elders of the family, all the while with his hand raised as he would slap me again. He couldn't continue his rant. I knocked him to the ground. He stayed down, not unconscious, but quite rattled and stunned that I had punched him. This was apparently what the cops needed as well. The family members were stunned and the cops managed for them to get away from me. They were pissed. A couple of aunts, uncles, and cousins managed to make a run to their car and drive away. The rest to meet with some very angry cops, some fines for breaking social distancing rules, and the expectation that charges might be pressed against them. I'm fine. I had some bruised fingers and my uncle had a broken cheekbone and my lovely cameras are now in the hands of the DA. The other family members have distanced themselves from the crap that happened. To be honest, I feel terrible. I feel like dividing a family because I just don't hand out my money. My husband says that this is money that I worked hard for, so I get to decide what happens. Still, I'm thinking of setting some college funds aside for the rest of the children, though I'm doubting that. It would also seem that I don't stand my ground and can be persuaded with violence, threats, and harassment. I am so, so sick of it. Am I the jerk? It seems like a lot of times when people come into a lot of money like this, whether it be through inheritance, through work success, or otherwise, somehow their closest relationships end up getting botched like this. And a situation like this is even more surprising because it sounds like the OP actually had a very comprehensive, full-fledged plan that seemed bulletproof. I mean, how can you complain about having your entire mortgage paid off, your kids' college covered, and maybe even a down payment for them in the future, depending on how long it takes them to go to college? I mean, the OP even went as far as to compensate the parents for the kid that was already in college so it would be fair. So it seems like the OP thought of pretty much everything that she could do in order to make this as fair and helpful to her family. That is far, 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 far more than most people would probably do. But yet, the sister-in-law is still bad-mouthing the OP through all of that when, from the way it sounds, the OP was very kind not only to her but to everyone in this family. Casually asking for a $35,000 seven-person vacation is just bonkers. And it sounds like she's asking for a vacation without the OP. Unless I'm misunderstanding that, based on the number of people that that vacation is for, she wants the OP to pay $35,000 for a vacation she won't even be able to be at. And maybe she thinks that's normal because of the precedent that has been set through paying off everyone's mortgage and going on this previous vacation. But wow. Anyway, if you were the OP in this situation, you came into a ton of money. How would you spend it? And if you would spend it on your family, how would you avoid a situation like this? Let me know down below with a jerk or not a jerk and why.